working on making my large dial conversion for my compound. I already did my cross slide. Um, I do have another cross slide screw. That screw. So I may make another one of those um, just to show how I did it. Now I'm using this as a guide. Um, it's on Steve Wells's website as a PDF file. Uh, you can download it. I'm gonna go roughly by this. Um, I take absolutely no credit for this write-up whatsoever. Um, it, this is very informational and, and definitely, definitely, if you're going to do these conversions, what you want to go by. Um, as you can see, uh, this is what it's going to be pretty much when it's done. We're going to use, um, oh, the, these plans are freely available, by the way, for, for download for free. Um, just go to his site. Lots and lots of South Bend information on there. Anything you could ever want to know about South Bend or even old catalogs, he has it. Um, but basically what we're going to have to do is make an entirely new shaft, uh, new screw assembly, which is going to include an Acme thread, the actual bushing section is completely different. Um, I'm not going to make it as large as this, I'm going to make it more in keeping with the originals, which were much, much shorter. Um, and it's going to incorporate two bearings in this area here, sandwiched between a plate. Um, and he does provide you with all of the relevant dimensions that you need. It's a very, very wonderful resource. Now, why you would want to do this conversion is number one, here's my old cross feed. You can see how small this dial is. It's maybe about uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch round, and everything is kind of crammed in there. Also, there are 100 graduations on there. Here's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm not going to be making my own dials. Um, I was able to buy a new, now well, this is an original dial, but I was able to buy a 200 graduation inch and three quarter dial. You can see, even though it looks a lot tighter, once I get some uh, black paint in here, you'll be able to differentiate everything. Plus this is 200 divisions. This is only 100 divisions. Now I'll show you the difference as to how that works out too and you can just see the actual size difference and you, know, you can actually read. All right, I'm over at the lathe here just to show you. Um, I have just a piece of scrap stock set up on centers with a dial indicator running against it just to show you um, some differences between what a large dial and small dial are. Um, this is the basic difference is, I mean, well, the first difference is the size. You can see the size difference there. Also, this is a 200 graduation dial. This is a 100 graduation dial. Um, so, in other words, this this reads actual movement of the cross slide, and this does not. So, what you what, what you have here is this one reads what you're taking off of the actual diameter, and this one reads what you're taking off of the radius. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Let me see if I can get a good angle on that dial indicator, and uh, show you what I mean. All right, we're set up on the dial indicator. You can see we're right at zero. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, cross slide and I'm going to move that in five thousandths of an inch, and you'll see what that happens. Okay, there's my five thousandths of an inch on my compound. You can see that we our, our cross slide travel only went in two and a half thousandths of an inch. That's why they call this a direct reading dial, is because it halves the movement of your compound. The reason you want to do that, or why it's called direct reading, is now I'm taking two and a half thousandths off of this side and two and a half thousandths off the other side, off the actual diameter, um, to equal that five thousandths. So whatever graduation you have here, I want to take five thousandths of an inch off, I just advance in five thousandths of an inch, and it takes five thousandths of an inch off. Now I'll show you what the 100 graduation dial does on, me, on my compound. If I can get this down to zero. Okay, now I'm going to move in five thousandths on my compound here. There's my five. You can see that we actually moved in five thousandths of an inch. Now, what that's going to do is actually take ten thousandths of an inch off of your diameter, five thousandths off of each radius. So basically, if this dial were on your the, on your compound too, 
you would have to divide everything by half to what you want to do. Which kind of gets to be a pain in the ass after a while because you're going to forget. At least I do. Um, now I think the first thing I'm going to work on is going to be making this shaft. Um, because this shaft, if I'm off a little bit on the measurements, that's going to govern the size of my bushing. So I want to try to get this done and in first. Now, unlike your compound, uh, unlike your cross-eyed feed screw, rather, sorry, um, it's a regular right-hand thread because of where the brass nut sits. On the south bends, the, the cross-eyed is left-hand thread because the brass nut sits on top. The compound is right-hand thread because the brass nut sits on the bottom. So, my first task here is going to be to grind myself a Acme thread for uh, 10 TPI. Obviously going to be taking my rod and cutting it down to these dimensions here and then we're going to be threading this. So I think I'm going to thread it first, cut, well, cut the relief, thread it, probably a little bit longer than I need just to give myself a little bit extra and then work on the rest of it because I don't want to get through all of this, screw up the thread, and then be really pissed off. So, what you're going to need to grind your Acme threads is an Acme thread gauge. Unlike your um, regular thread gauges, hmm. let me find my fish. Always hiding at the bottom of your tool bin. This is your regular um, 60 degree uh, thread gauge, your fish. This is going to be 29 degrees. You can see the difference there. Um, it's going to be ground the same exact way, but the only thing now, instead of just grinding your point as on a 60 degree and having your, um, your actually, your gearing delineate your TPI with Acme gauges, that's where these little slots come in. What you have to do is grind the tip of your Acme thread tool to correspond to this notch or whatever notch your threads happen to be. We're, we're going 10 TPI so the tip of our tool has to fit into this square notch and here's your 29 degrees. Now you can cut these any way you want with my tool blank to get that 29 degrees. In other words, you, you don't have to have it, your 29 degree angle, directly centered on your tool. You can have it offset. So you can use that edge as a flat, grind your 29 degrees there, and then to present it to your work at that 29 degree angle that way. Or you can do the opposite here. It presents your tool straight into your work that way. Depends on however you want to cut. I think all I'm going to do is just do it right down the middle just because that's the easiest way to do it. Um, and I'm not taking a huge amount off on one side. So let me mark up my tool bit using this gauge and go from there. And we got a quick coat of uh, bluing on there and a scribe line for that 29 degree angle. I'm going to take it over to my... Uh, bench grinder over there. I'm going to grind this out. Uh, I'm going to try to tape it, but it's in a very dark spot of my shop down here, so if it doesn't come out good, sorry. I was actually able to set up some light over here, so you should be able to see what I'm doing. Um, this is just my 8 inch uh, Rayobi bench grinder. I just got the regular, these are actually still the wheels that I came with, they got nothing special. Um, the only thing I did do to this besides balancing these wheels um, is add this table. Now this is just a piece of uh, quarter inch plate that is bolted to the original table. It will look somewhat like that minus the drill slot. So let's get going here and also I am wearing safety glasses because I really don't feel like getting something dug out of my eye today and I have my cooling cup right here this cooling tray these things are useless honestly 
That's, it's just a piece of garbage. I just use a cup of water in it. Alright, let's see if we can get that shape. Or not too. Oh, this is this table's just tilted down at a, about a 10, 12 degree angle. So I'm gonna when I come in here, it's gonna be a, a 10 degree angle this way, this way, and uh, on the front when we grind the um, that to fit that notch. First thing is to dress your wheel. I don't have anything special. I just use the uh, star wheels. Noisy and messy, but cheap and gets the job done. Uh, progress so far. One facet. On to the other side. Now you can see we're off a little bit. Right there, so you can wiggle it. It's got a little bit more to go. Take a touch off that side. And there you go. And uh, if I hold it up like this, you can't see any light through it. Now, I have to make this tip fit that's locked there you go okay we're back over at the bench you can see our bit fits nicely into that 29 degree angle here without any of that white paper showing through. That tip fits in here. You can see a little bit of white through. It's just going to be shaved down a hair. Um, that I'm going to take out with a honing stone um, and completely square off the tip. So let me do that. Okay, I just stoned all the faces. You can see the shinier spots here. Um, the reason why you're only hitting on two areas is because that... Um, that wheel is round so when you're running up against it like this you're creating a hollow in the middle but that's fine because you really only need a sharp edge on your cutting which is here I did stone the top real quick just to make sure I didn't have a burr and we're fitting really nice in there I like that so this is gonna be our tool for cutting our acme thread so now um, What I'm going to have to do is what I'll, I'll rough out a piece this long and then we'll measure our diameter and go from there. And I'm going to use a half inch piece of um, cold rolled steel for this uh, 12L14 to make this piece. Slight change of plans. I forgot to take into account this diameter here which is 0.920 so I'm going to scrap the half inch bar plan and I'm going to have to go with a one inch bar and basically uh, whittle it down to the three eighths this is half inch and then that's just a couple of thousandths off of uh, the one inch diameter uh, I added all the all these totals up the 
my entire length here, a little over five and a half inches, and then um, this section here, from here to here, I add it up. It ends up being a little over two inches, which is perfect because my plan is to cut this six inches just so I have enough to face off and play around with if I screw up anywhere. And also, my chuck jaws on my buck are an inch and a half away from the plate. So that gives me enough meat to be able to grab this, cut this section down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut, take this all the way down a half inch, cut this little register here, and then take it down to three eighths, all in one setting of the chuck this way. Now I'm gonna thread or cut my thing around in my chuck, grab it by here and gently on the thread, so put a piece of paper in between, and then machine this this face and this face. Um, that's the basic plan. Now we're gonna be using one inch. Uh, so after coming over to big red here, well, actually, not really red, more like a maroon. We got the little knob that adjusts my uh, my guide wheels actually snapped right off. And looking at it, it's just a little tiny piece of plastic. It wasn't even that thick at the bottom of that. Just pressed on a little knurled stud here. Well, there's a project for another day. Anyway, and my bar set up for cut six inches. We'll cut that out now. Through hole in this is, um, I think it's an inch and a quarter. So I can push it all the way back here. Yeah, usually rule of thumb is um, two and a half times the diameter of your part. You'll have to have some way of supporting it. But you can see here from the end of our chuck to roughly the end. We'll call that 350. Um, just shy of two, two and three eighths or so. Um, so I'm just gonna clamp this in my chuck. I'll dial this in, make sure we we got as little run out as possible, and then just face and center drill like normal. <laughs> 